Okay. city with the swings in temperature. It makes life interesting. And through it all, the people, especially when it began from border to border, she sea to shining sea, the people stayed home and read books and listened and rest and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still. And listened more deeply, some meditated, some prayed, some danced, some met their shadows. And the people, they began to think differently and the people healed. And in the absence of People living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth, creation, began to heal. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their loss and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal and feed the earth more fully as they had in the spirit of resurrection they had been healed
work to undergo in life. When we forgive and embrace grace, you don't just change the past. You change the future. And if we are concerned about the future, and if we are hopeful of what that looks like, then we embrace and we lean into the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Jesus just has a few fish 
and a few loaves of bread, and he feeds thousands of kids. And we are called to do the same. There are a lot of folks in our city who struggle. And there was this neat program that I saw. A church would go out and buy gift certificates from Super One with money on it. And they would, we would, pass them out in compassion. Compassion we feel, and when we see, we feel the struggle in folks. And we respond in kind. There's also a church that's having a food drive today, kiddos. And so we are gathering fruit, food from 10 to noon, non-perishable food items. You can come with your family, drive right down Arlington Avenue, come into our front stoop here, don't get out of the car, uh, go ahead and pass on the food and we will pass it on to those who are struggling in this moment, in these difficult moments. We take care of our neighbors. That's what we do, kids. We're the church, and we serve. We serve our neighbors. According to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what he does. Jesus, he feeds the 5,000 under difficult circumstances because John the Baptist is murdered. And so Jesus needs to get away. He needs and yearns for a time of solitude. Still, with all that's going on, he has compassion for others. And this will not allow him just to dismiss those who need him. And the Spirit then moves him to perform one of his greatest miracles. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and all were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Here's a habit from Jesus himself. He would, would withdraw. Yearning for solitude, he would withdraw to a deserted place under tough circumstances. And his ability to do so, his des desire, is 
exemplary. One of my good friends just returned from the Boundary Waters. We are so lucky to have it so close. He said, BWCA, July 2020. And people encapsulate that. They capture that with the month and the year because it's generational. They'll go every single year. And my friend went on to describe it was an epic adventure into the wilderness, into a deserted place. Snowbank, you know it, a great entry point. Snowbank to Ensign, my heaven on earth, Ensign, to Kekabit, to Fraser, to Ima, and then back to Snowbank. It's a giant loop. He and his friend, they traveled across 27 lakes or so, including Vera Lake. Fitting because his eldest daughter's name is Vera. He continued, absolutely stunning. Thank God for wild places. Thank you, Rolf Lowenberg, the Moor, for sharing such an adventure with us. And the pictures are wonderful as well. Rolf, he gets it. Long ago, Jesus got it too. He withdrew to a deserted place, but he's always open. He's always open and ready. Just as his ability to get away is exemplary, his interruptibility is also something to behold. This is the ideal life of any. As we Zigzag between the discipline of time alone and then willing to be interrupted to respond to a person needing mercy. This is a great need. And Jesus is feeling it. We're told he has compassion. The Greek, esplan genese. It is so evocative. It means an inner turmoil that Jesus is experiencing, a twisting of the guts when he witnesses such hunger. He really feels what the people are feeling. And we see he's not ordering them around or judging them. His entrails get all contorted as he stands within the mess. He's beside himself. I love this reply to the disciples informing him of the obvious that the crowd is hungry. And here's his response. Well, he give them something to eat. <laughs> Let's not overcomplicate things. Life can be so complex, but here it is. Well, Jesus says, get to it. And there's an emphasis on the you. You give them something to eat. The five loaves and two fishes have been commemorated 
in an unforgettable way across history and across the globe. I want you to watch for them, not just within this next week, but the rest of your journey. Watch for the five loaves and the two fishes because it captures one of the greatest miracles of his time, of his ministry, and what he stood for, for the neighbor. Wouldn't a better miracle have been to have produced just enough for the crowd instead of all the leftovers? What's with the leftovers? I don't know where this question of mine comes from, but I don't really care for leftovers. I used to love them. But for whatever reason, I'll cook well. I'll support my family and do my best and I enjoy it in that instance. But that transition from getting it cleaned up and into the freezer and then back again has not worked for me. So, for whatever reason, my question is, why the leftovers? What did they do with all of them? Did they worship the bread that was left over? We see that sometimes in the church. Did they distribute the leftover bread to the poor? Why the waste? I don't know what it's about, but one of my primary roles in taking care of my two girls is to make sure they're they're fed and not only that that they're well fed that they're provided healthy options even options that i know that they won't even touch let alone look at but i have really good luck with berries so i'm piling on oh they've been great lately haven't they the blueberries the raspberries I even introduced red currants. And I knew, I knew that even just one bite of that little berry, that sour berry would send my kids running, but I put it on the plate anyways. Wasteful? <laughs> I hate that aspect of it too. But a loving act? Beautifully red, but sour to my littles, coupled with the main dish, drink, dessert. Small little stomachs, but it's my way. This morning's story is about lavishness, God's lavishness that God really does give us more than enough. There's enough, and then there's more than enough for you. It's called super abundance, and we will be practicing it together at 10 o'clock. I will see you then, 10 to noon. Be sure to make sure you stay in your car and wear a mask, but I will be glad to see you as we work to take care of a basic need right here in the Heights. Dorothy Day, I like the story about her. She gave a big diamond ring to a poor person. Who says that it should be sold and distributed according to the world's calculus? God wants fabulous things for all. I remember back in seminary, I traveled to San Lucas Toleman, Guatemala, and we were told that while packing is to keep your personal belongings very, very light. Don't bring much because we need your suitcases. We're going to fill them with hard-to-find resources, especially medical supplies from the states. We filled these suitcases to the brim. 
and extra suitcases we carried to full of treats, toys for the local kids. We had a giddy feast, a wonderful time that will stay with me the rest of my life. Were our gifts unexpected? Yes, perhaps even a bit wasteful. But God's like that. Amen. Here now is a friendly reminder that doing your best does not mean working yourself to the point of a nervous breakdown. Come as you are now to the table, for here in this place you are enough. The Lord be with you. Rest. 
And our soul stands in God in sure strength. And our soul is naturally rooted in God, in God's endless love. to listen to the voice of desire that disturbs you when you have settled for something safe. May I have the wisdom to enter generously into your unease to discover the new direction your longing may take you. May the forms of your belonging and love, creativity and friendship be equal to the grandeur and the call now of your mind, body and soul to resurrection, the promise of your holy baptism. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Broke it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink and eat, saying, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sin. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This this holy moment, this Eucharist, awakens us from the slumber of the illusion that we are alone. I know it's tough, but hear these external words of, you're not alone, and grace. For this is the body of Christ, broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Now, preparing to receive Holy Communion in your home, in your home is wherever you are. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. And now, in the act of super abundance, commune one another.
This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May it strengthen you and keep you. May it strengthen you for all that you're dealing with right now and what is to come for the next few days. And may it keep you in God's overabundance enough grace for you. Amen. Praise the one who breaks the darkness.
Okay. I love you all. Hang in there. Uh, see you from 10 to noon for our food drive for the food shelf. Uh, go ahead and post any uh, prayer, prayers of joy, prayers of concern now, and Jessica and I will follow up on them. Uh, Sandy's mom is doing better and uh, is uh, in rehab after, um, I believe it had something to do with her, her knee or her, her leg, but the report sounded good and she's uh, well on her way after surgery. So keep Sandy and Ben and the whole family in your prayers. Uh, any others, uh, go ahead and just let me know. Until then, I'll see you on Arlington or at the lake.